So an allogeneic stem cell transplant, or rather an allotransplant, is a medical procedure that is again used to treat some forms of blood cancer. In an allogeneic transplant, what happens is that stem cells are obtained from a donor, which could be a family member or unrelated donor, and are given to patients to help rescue them and help to save them in the treatment of blood cancers. Allogeneic stem cell transplants tend to be reserved for patients with advanced forms of blood cancers. Uh, particularly, the patients who most usually receive allogeneic stem cell transplants tend to be patients who either have forms of aggressive acute leukemia, such as acute myeloid leukemia and acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Other patients who may benefit from an allogeneic stem cell transplant include patients with myelodysplastic syndromes or sometimes patients with advanced forms of lymphoma or even myeloma. So for a patient to be suitable for an allogeneic stem cell transplant, they must meet several criteria. Firstly, the disease must be a type of disease which we know will respond well to the transplant. Secondly, the patient needs to be fit and well for a transplant. So as this is a slightly more high-risk procedure, the patient must meet certain physical fitness criteria. Thirdly, the patient's disease must be well controlled at the time of the transplant. And in addition, the patient must have a suitable, well-matched donor who can donate the stem cells so to help the patient for the transplant. For a donor to be eligible uh, to, to donate for a patient, uh, again, uh, we look at what we call the HLA typing. HLA typing is a form of tissue typing that we use to determine whether a donor and a patient are matched. And this form of typing can be done by testing either patient or donor, either using what we call a buckle swab, which is a cotton swab, against the cheek or a blood test. So there are several levels of donors which potentially can be eligible as, uh, to be used for allogeneic transplants. At the first level, the best donors that we always prefer to use are what we call sibling donors, which are either brothers or sisters of a patient. Because for brothers and sisters, there's a 25% chance that they can be a full HLA match with the patient. So that tends to be the first choice option. However, if they don't have any matched siblings, we then look at other alternatives. So this includes firstly, uh, an unrelated matched donor. So there are global registries where donors from either from Singapore or around the world are registered into an international registry. And using the patient's HLA type, we can search the registry to see if they have a suitably matched donor available either locally in Singapore or internationally. Thirdly, we also look at what we call a mismatched donor. And this is a form of technique for transplantation which has gained popularity over the last few years. So occasionally, if we cannot find an un unrelated match donor or sibling donor, we will look at what we call a haploidentical donor. And a haploidentical donor is a donor from the family who is a 50% match with the patient. Increasingly, over the recent years, uh, results have shown that haplo haploidentical donor transplants can do as well as patients who have received a transplant from a matched unrelated donor. Lastly, we still sometimes use cord blood donors uh, as, a, as an option for patients who need a transplant. These cord blood donors tend to be registered on the international registries again, and we may use them for patients where we cannot find a suitable adult matched family member or unrelated matched donor.